As a follow-up to the last video we did mentioning the brake specific fuel consumption, instead of just looking at one type of esoteric weird engine being the Wankel Mazda rotary engine, we decided to look at its competitor and that being the reciprocating engine. And in this case we picked a certain point in time being the Group C sports car era, the final sort of stages of development of that era before it was phased out and its most sort of formidable, well, this wasn't a formidable competitor, it was a far superior engine in every in every respect, and that's what we hope to show in this in this video. It's not about getting people anxious and angry and disappointed, you know, if you fit into the into the rotary camp and you think, oh you know, you're just a hater, you don't like you don't like Mazdas. I actually love Mazdas, that's what I grew up with, that's what I what I always like, but I have respect and understanding of, of every type of principle and that's what hopefully I can get across here. Using these terms that you only sort of hear mechanical engineers talk about, it's quite important and it's important in terms of understanding what your engine is and what it takes to get it to develop power and, and also to be efficient as well. Seeing the Group C era, and part of the thing of sports car racing is you do a lot of endurance races and and what's important in one type of race was one of the restricting factors it's unlike today with modern motor racing where everything is restricted and everything's controlled back then 30 odd years ago the only restriction on the engine side of things that you had was you had to use your allocation of fuel and that allocation was 2550 litres. You weren't allowed to have any more of that inside your fuel jugs put into any specific car, that's it. And that really is the ultimate distiller of engine technologies. You know, if you can, it's no point carrying around four tonnes of fuel, or, you know, over 5000 litres of fuel when you have to carry all that stuff around inside the car it's going to make the car fundamentally slower so there's a lot of negatives and that's why brake specific fuel consumption is, is an important factor to consider when you're modifying your own personal engine so again this was the 1990 time frame in the Mazda paper oh, sorry the Mercedes paper you see here they cover every iteration of this engine from 89 to 90 they used it in 91 as well Mazda paper is just specifically talking about or focusing on the final iteration of their engine, the R26B. You couldn't get two more different engines, you know, completely different operating principle. You've got a 1080 crank cycle degrees for a Wankel rotary. You've got a four stroke 720 degree engine over here, reciprocating twin turbocharged V8. It's a great comparison to look at. Now the undeniable fact is for people who know is that the brake specific fuel consumption and the specific power of a rotary engine is quite low but you need to compare apples to apples. There's you know here we're looking at and we're focusing on simply the fuel consumption aspect and the amount of power you can make on a given amount of fuel. It's not a comparison of what's the specific output of this engine versus this engine you know, it's not a it's not a comparison that way because they don't measure up that way well, all we're looking at is the fuel that you're using inside the engine there's other little side notes looking at the weight so this engine's total combination was 212 kilograms here Mazda stated as 180 kilos but I don't think they list things like the air boxes and the exhaust system but granted the exhaust system is quite light in this compared to here but the Mercedes figure is quite comprehensive they list the turbochargers, the exhaust manifolds, everything bar the inner coolers. Right so let's get into it and, and have a look at this so Mercedes-Benz in part of their basic design process was looking at you know, what's technically the best way to win a specific type of race and be competitive in, in every version, whether it's an endurance race, a sprint race, whatever it may be. 
and and they quickly decided upon it had to be turbocharged and it had to be a relatively high capacity and low pressure ratio run inside the engine and in their case they picked a maximum of two bar absolute pressure as the maximum boost pressure to operate in qualifying form they picked a relatively low engine speed limit because one of the factors is as you rev an engine higher and higher and higher you end up with a lot of frictional losses so they do tend to become inefficient and they were quite competitive on in terms at the point in time when these engines were made 30 odd years ago of a, of a gross sort of static weight of the engine of 210 kilos Mazda was 180 here's the basic specifications of the engine let's have a look at the Mazda and check it out so we've got a four rotor based around Mazda production geometries what they've used for since ever for the 13B engine we have the Mercedes Benz it is a production engine block they did manufacture some different heads and twin cam versions for this I don't know the exact ins and outs but obviously there's a lot of bespoke bolt-ons same with the Mazda none of this is production stuff you know peripheral boarding was never in production three spark plugs was never in production dry sumps were never in production you get the idea right but essentially it is an OEM based engine and this is an OEM based engine at least in the four rotors case the architecture is they've only ever produced a three rotor but in this case they, they had a four rotor to be competitive right so let's get on to the most important part of it and, and looking at what we said the video was about and looking at the brake specific fuel consumption and, and how it relates we have to compare the Mazda were quite funny in the way they did this that they selectively pick the maximum output of the engine the maximum torque of the engine right but for their brake specific fuel consumption probably because they're a bit conscious of the fact that it was so shit was they only listed the minimum um, brake specific fuel consumption right so the minimum was with an air fuel ratio that, that did not allow the maximum amount of power to be produced in the engine so they run the engine marginally weak from the best air fuel ratio setting to get the highest power figure of 515 kilowatts right so to get an acceptable amount of fuel consumption out of the engine to to last over a 24-hour race to to not exceed the 2500 odd litre limitation they had per car was that they had to run the engine marginally weak and that reduced the power output so it wasn't the 700 odd horsepower that everybody sort of claims as, as being the maximum it was more like you have to iterate between these so we've got 400 kilowatts 500 450 here if you follow this across to the dotted line let's call it 475 odd kilowatts right and our brake specific fuel consumption at this minimum setting could be a lambda setting of one the line here if you follow it across is just over 300 grams per kilowatt per hour now compare that to the reciprocating engine so here we have the power and torque and BSFC under wide open throttle conditions for the 1990 twin cam engine we have a power rating of 550 kilowatts so even when set to the minimum fuel consumption setting the power is 35 kilowatts higher than what the Mazda was set at its maximum power setting i.e. highest fuel consumption setting but check out the brake specific fuel consumption the brake specific fuel consumption is just under 260 grams per kilowatt per hour right versus the Mazda which is over 300 it's a massive difference so you have a far higher efficiency engine inside here and it's to do with those fundamentals that I mentioned in the last video the rotary engine is well known for having a very very poor combustion chamber it has a high surface area to volume relationship 
the flame speed of burning has a lot of dead areas in it. So even though you fit a third spark plug, which only in their case reduced the brake specific fuel consumption by 2%, it doesn't account for the fundamental design flaws of the engine, right? So if you look, here's a little cutaway of the engine. They have an unbelievably long and quite wide surface area. And all of those things add up to, to having an extremely poor efficiency inside the engine. You have just a joke of, of a length of a ceiling path. So these side seals, the corner plugs, the apex seal, all of those things contribute to have very, very poor combustion sealing. You have poor areas to volume relationships inside the engine. And, and that's really why the brake specific fuel consumption is so abhorrent in these engines versus a reciprocating engine. But one of the things with the with the Mercedes engine is, that was the minimum power setting, right? So you could run this engine at 680 kilowatts and still use far less fuel. That's 900 odd horsepower compared to the 700 horsepower of the four rotor engine and still use a lot less fuel ultimately. And this is what you saw when the vehicles raced in sprint races, The Group C Sauber's would qualify, you know, eight, nine, ten seconds ahead of the Mazda 787B. It was you couldn't even compare the two cars. You know, it was a joke. It was an ongoing sort of joke. Um, Mazda won the 24-hour of Le Mans race. You know, good on them. They won it, but these three cars had had issues. One had an accident in the middle of the night. One ran over something, destroyed the underneath of the car, and the other one had an alternator belt fail, which caused the water pump, to, mechanical water pump to stop working and the engine overheated. So you can't help bad luck. But for anyone who says that this engine was superior and, and the Mazda engine won on, you know, few, better superior fuel economy, you have to be an A-grade fuckwit or smoking ass crack or I don't know what the fuck these people's issues are, but they obviously have no idea or comprehension of reality. You know, it was just pure good luck. In every other race, Mazda finished nowhere. And that was other endurance races. It was just pure good luck and good on them. You know, they won a race. Congratulations, the engine sounds sick. You know, it's a screaming four-rotor. Sounds fantastic, but don't lose sight of the fact that it's an A-grade shitbox nugget of an engine. You know, it's, it's really, really tragic how bad it is. Now let's have a look at a bit of a technical analysis of the two and have a look at it inside the sheet. Now, specific power is quite an interesting interesting one. So you got to you got to compare them, you know, if we set the power levels, this is at the minimum specific fuel consumption of of the engines and what the sort of rating was in race trim for each. So the Mercedes-Benz engine running at a 1 lambda level and 1800 millibar 11.6 psi of boost had a specific power of 82 horsepower per litre per bar versus the Mazda engine, normally aspirated right, so we pegged at whatever our ambient pressure is on the day, 120 horsepower per litre per bar of, of pressure. We have no option of changing the pressure ratio here, right? So this is the setting for the minimum fuel consumption. So in my sheet, we do it in grams per horsepower per hour. You can easily convert that to grams per kilowatt per hour. You can see here 630 horsepower is the power that this engine could produce versus 740 horsepower for the, for the Mercedes-Benz engine. They had the ability, obviously, to adjust the boost pressure inside the engine. So we can lower this down to get the powers equivalent. Uh, I think we'll need roughly 1500 odd. There we go, 1550. That's, let's call it the same, 637 versus 530. If we look at the fuel flows, the fuel flow for the four rotor needs to be 180 litres per hour. Same level of engine power, a little bit more for the Mercedes, 164 litres per hour. You look at the differences in the specific fuel consumption, 218 grams per horsepower per, per hour, 
196 grams per horsepower per hour. And that's the difference, right? You've got a far more efficient engine, a far better engine principle, ultimately a far more reliable engine. I mean, the Mazda, when they pulled it apart, if you have a look at some of their graphs, they dropped something like 4 or 5% engine horsepower over the 24-hour race due to wear. They actually themselves mentioned that a lot of the ceiling surfaces inside the engine were worn between one-third and a half of their critical limits. The Mercedes-Benz engine, when they pulled that apart, they actually dynoed it before they pulled it apart. The engine actually increased in horsepower for the same operating conditions versus what it was at the start of the race, so it effectively broke in more. And the engines were perfect. I think in three seasons of racing, like three complete seasons of racing over the development iterations of the engine, the only failure that they ever had inside the actual motor was a timing belt chain tensioner related item and it was just a because it was an OEM piece I think it just broke but aside from that you know the engine was was really perfect and that's what you'd expect with five litres of engine displacement running very low levels of boost pressure uh, to finish it off let's have a look at the highest level so the highest level for this engine was set to uh, rich fuel mixture which utilised all of the air inside the engine and the two bar maximum boost pressure setting and this was the rated output of their engine, 680 kilowatts and 910 horsepower. If you look at the Mazda engine, their best fuel consu uh, their best lambda setting for maximum power is 0.9. All these other variables are fixed. You can't increase the volumetric efficiency. You can't change the air temperature inside the air box. And you can't obviously increase anything above what your ambient pressure in the is in the day. And they have a specific power of 133 horsepower per litre per bar. A final engine output of 699.5 horsepower, 700 horsepower versus 910.6. So there you go. You've got a shitbox of an engine and a proper engine. And as far as I can tell, this is the first and proper analysis of the two and, and why what is what and, and what what you should be looking at when you want to do a comparison between any of them. I hope people got some enjoyment and learned something along the way here. Um, if you've got any suggestions, you know, want to tell me to get fucked or whatever you like, feel free to leave a comment below and, and we'll see you in the next video.